Hello there, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this video we're going to be taking a look at another really sleek stylish canister filter. This one is the Hydor Professional 250 which is basically a, a smaller version of the 600 that we looked at a few weeks ago. It's exactly the same design, works in exactly the same way, just it's a little bit smaller. There we go. Looks a little bit like a external hard drive that you'd expect to see, like a keyboard sitting next to, but this is in fact a canister filter. I really like this design, and if you've seen the video I did on the 600 version of this, you'll know that I was very impressed with it. This one is basically exactly the same, just smaller. So let's get the top off and see what comes with it. This one was sent to me by a guy called John. Thank you very much, John. He hasn't actually seen this yet. He bought this on Amazon and got it sent straight to me. And then I'll upgrade it and send it back to him. It has taken a little bit longer than usual for this because I've been ridiculously busy. So I apologize there. But what I'm going to put in here will surely make up for it. Or hopefully make up for it. So let's get the top off and take a look. Okay, just like most canister filters, we've got a priming button there, which is very well made. It's not some little fiddly thing that you have to lift up and down. That's nice. These multi-directional in and out are very well made. And a decent size as well. Sometimes you get them, they're not quite as wide as that, which does restrict the actual flow. On each end, We've got a reasonably big clamp. And then on the long side, we've got a really unusual release mechanism. It's like a little sliding lever. And that allows the top to be lifted off. And the top is just a basic in and out. That's where our pump sits. So in here, we've got the screen across the top to stop anything being drawn into the pump. Top tray is just a fine pad. It's actually quite a nice fine pad, so we will keep that. Middle tray is some sintered glass rings, which actually look pretty good quality. But obviously because of the ring shape, they're not really gonna support anaerobic bacteria, so we will be swapping those out. And then the bottom tray has quite a big block of coarse sponge. And then in the bottom there, we haven't really got space to add any primary settlement, so we're just gonna leave this container as it is and concentrate on the trays. Now, one thing you may be noticing is that these trays aren't very tall. Really, by the time you get the top and the bottom bit that allow them to slot into each other, taken out of the mix, you've got, oh, inch and three quarters which isn't a lot, possibly, yeah, four, four and a half centimeters. There's not much there to work with. And in an ideal world, we would want to try and get the coarse, medium and fine sponges into the bottom tray. So that would be the first one the water hit. That may be difficult with such skinny little trays. Okay, you can see that foam there is probably about an inch thick. And ideally, we need one of those and a coarse and a fine one to fit in there. Right, so we've got some pond foam cut to size. That does fit together, but that's still pretty thick. Our bottom coarse pads are going to go in. Nice and neatly. Followed by our medium density pad. And unfortunately that pretty much packs out our bottom tray. I'll see if I can get something fine enough in there, if I can find a little skinny bit of fine pad anywhere. Mm, the Hydro one is pretty thick, but it, it might squash down. 
I think that might actually go in there. It looks ridiculous sticking out the top. But I think when we get the other tree onto there, that might squash down okay. Let's just try it with this one. That's actually okay. I didn't think it would be. But because you've got a little bit here to allow for a bit of foam to, to meet this one, that doesn't actually squash down too hard. It doesn't compress it to make it useless. That's okay. Right, so in the bottom tray, now we've got our coarse and medium and our fine pad. And what that ensures is, by the time the water leaves that bottom tray, it's clean. And that means that the two trays of media that are going to go above it will be kept clean as well. The media will be operating in clean water, which is very important because when you're using really porous, receptive, good media, it needs to be operating in clean water. Simple as that. If you operate it in dirty water or water that initially starts out clean and then because you've got a fine pad on the very top, gets clogged with all the fine particles clogging up the media behind the fine pad, it's going to be inefficient. This ensures that the media stays efficient. Most people will be expecting me to say now, I'm going to fill this with BioHome Ultimate because it's the best media for canister filters, uh, surface area, etc, etc, and so on and such forth. But because those trays are so skinny, I'm actually going to use the BioHome Ultimate's smaller version which is called BioHome Plus. It's a little bit more dense and the stick size is actually a little bit smaller in diameter so you can get a lot more into a restricted space like this. So that's what we're going to use in this one, BioHome Plus. That's our BioHome Plus. It looks pretty much exactly the same as BioHome Ultimate but it is a little bit smaller and it is more dense. The extra density gives the water more dwell time when you've got it in small situations like this when you've got a lot of water being forced over the media. Some would argue that that is probably better for a, a smaller situation than the BioHome Ultimate. Um, I think they'll both work well enough but you can get various amounts of the different media in. For example, I filled one of these with the BioHome Ultimate and got 750 grams per tray. That equates to 1.65 pounds for you guys in America. So with two trays, that's 1.5 kilos or 3.3 pound of BioHome Ultimate in total for this filter. If we use the BioHome Plus, we can get 850 grams in each tray, which is 1.7 pound. That makes a total of 1.7 kilos for the two trays, and that's 3.74 pound. So there is a bit of a difference there, but the biggest difference is if we use the bio gravel in there, which is a porous gravel made of the same stuff as the BioHome Ultimate and the BioHome Plus. Generally, we would recommend using that, hello Angus, in very small situations like hang on the back filters, um, internal filters and so on, but there is an increasing amount of people using it in small canister filters. Um, apparently to great effect so you know that's another option as well and the amount that you can get in each tray is a hell of a lot more than these other medias no come on come on come on how are you how are you man yeah you can actually get 1.3 kilos which is 2.86 pound in each tray so that makes a total of 2.6 kilos of media in this little filter. That's 5.72 pounds. So the difference between the BioHome Ultimate in weight and the BioGravel in weight would be as follows. Well, actually it's, it's over a kilo difference. That's a hell of a difference. That's making me think about this BioGravel and it being used in these small canisters because as I say, we've had a lot of reports of people using it to great effect probably because it can get more in. The big reason we tend not to recommend that for canister filters is if you're taking that out and this handle slips and 
tips it all over the floor, you've got a hell of a clean up job to do. Whereas if you've got sticks that are about the size of your finger, they're very easy to pick up and put back in. There's literally thousands of them. That was only a few of them. But there's literally thousands of pieces of media in each tree. Imagine the whole lot coming out on your carpet. I would personally go with the stick shaped media and in this case that is the Biohome Plus. And just as a comparison, these bigger bits are the Biohome Ultimate. See it's a little bit rougher and it's a little bit more porous as well. And the stuff on the left is the Biohome Plus. It's still extremely porous but it is a little bit more dense than the Biohome Ultimate. And you can see why you can get more in that particular tray when you're using the smaller media. So really the choice is yours. I mean, I, any of these different types of media would do a cracking job, but you can get various amounts of them in. So depending on what type of media you go for, you can get between 1.5 kilos and 2.6 kilos in. The one we've gone for gives us 1.7 kilos in total, 3.74 pound. So now we drop our bottom tray in. followed by a tray of media. Yep, that's a little bit springy that, but uh, it will flatten down. Followed by another tray of media. And now with the combined weight of those two trays of media, that bottom tray with all the foams in has settled nicely. Pump head goes back on. And we're ready to go. Very good. So now we've got the filter set up correctly. Water comes in, to the bottom, goes up through coarse, medium, fine pads. Then it goes through two trays of biological media. If you want to put chemical media like carbon or activated charcoal in, just put that in the top of the top tray so it's operating in the cleanest possible water. It would go mechanical, biological, chemical. Okay, so we've got 1.7 kilos of Biohome Plus in this filter. Hydor say that this filter is suitable for between 140 and 250 litres which is 40 to 75 US gallons. Now because we've got 1.7 kilos of media in there and because it generally takes one kilo of media per 100 litres to enable that full cycle for a normally stocked tank, that makes this filter, the way it's set up now, suitable for a full cycle on a normally stocked tank of around 170 litres, which is 45 US gallons. And if we'd gone for the bio gravel, like a lot of you guys in America are doing, we could have got 2.6 kilos in, which would make that suitable for a normally stocked tank of 260 litres or 68 US gallons. A very well made filter, holds a reasonable amount of media, it looks very stylish. And really the look of it is one of those things that if you want to please your wife and you're upgrading your filtration system, High door would be a very good choice to go for because it does look very stylish. If you buy some huge monstrosity, she's not going to be pleased if you're spending that money. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it wherever you think anybody else might benefit from seeing it. And if you've got a filter you want me to take a look at, by all means get in touch. My contact details are in the video description and also in the pinned comment. Thanks for watching. See you next time.